Forgive me if I remain seated while I present these few remarks. It is not by choice that I speak from a wheelchair. I notice that the rest of you seem to enjoy the conference sitting down, so I'll follow your example. <laughs> With reference to both standing and sitting, I have observed that life, every life, has a full share of ups and downs. Indeed, we may see many joys and sorrows in the world, many changed plans and new directions, many blessings that do not always look or feel like blessings, and much that humbles us and improves our patience and our faith. We have all had the, those experiences from time to time, and I suppose we always will. A passage from one of the greatest prophetic sermons ever given, King Benjamin's masterful discourse to the people of Zarahemla in the Book of Mormon, reads this way, Men drink damnation to their own souls, except they humble themselves and become as little children. For the natural man is an enemy to God, and has been from the fall of Adam, and will be forever and ever unless he yields to the enticings of the Holy Spirit, and putteth off the natural man, and becometh a saint through the atonement of Christ the Lord, and becometh as a child submissive, meek, humble, patient, full of love, willing to submit to all things which the Lord seeth fit to inflict upon him. Even as a child doth submit to his father. Being childlike and submitting to our father's will is not always easy. President Spencer W. Kimball, who knew a good deal about suffering, disappointment, and circumstances beyond his control once wrote, Being human, we would expel from our lives physical pain and mental anguish and assure ourselves of continual ease and comfort. But if we were to close the doors upon sorrow and distress, we might be excluding our greatest friends and benefactors. Suffering can make saints of people as they learn patience, long-suffering, and self-mastery. In that statement, President Kimball refers to closing doors upon certain experiences in life. That image brings to mind a line from Cervantes' great classic, Don Quixote, that has given me comfort over the years. In that masterpiece, we find the short but very important reminder that where one door closes, another opens. Doors close regularly in our lives, and some of those closings cause genuine pain and heartache. But I do believe that where one such door closes, another opens, and perhaps more than one, with hope and blessings in other areas of our lives that we might not have discovered otherwise. Our beloved Quorum President, Marion G. Romney, is not able to be with us here today. My, how we miss his companionship and his wit and experience and his leadership. President Romney has had some doors to enclose for him, even in the work of his ministry. He's known considerable pain and discouragement and seen his plans change during these past few years. But it was he who, from this very pulpit a few years ago, said that all men and women, including the most faithful and loyal, would find adversity and affliction in their lives. 
Because in the words of Joseph Smith, men have to suffer that they might come upon Mount Zion and be exalted above the heavens. President Romney then said, this does not mean that we crave suffering. We avoid all we can, however we now know, and we knew when we elected to come into mortality that we would here be proved in the crucible of adversity and affliction. Furthermore, the Father's plan for proving and refining his children did not exempt the Savior himself. The suffering he undertook to endure, and which he did endure, equaled the combined suffering of all men and women everywhere. Trembling and bleeding and wishing to shrink from the cup, he said, I partook and finished my preparations unto the children of men. All of us must finish our preparations unto the children of men. Christ's preparations were quite different from our own, but we all have preparations to make, doors to open. To make such important preparations often will require some pain, some unexpected changes in life's path, and some submitting even as a child doth submit to his father. Finishing divine preparations and opening celestial doors may take us, indeed, undoubtedly will take us, right up to the concluding hours of our mortal lives. We all miss our beloved brother A. Theodore Tuttle, who recently opened a new door to return to his heavenly home. His preparations in mortality have been fully completed for such a journey. He too, like President Romney, stood in this tabernacle and spoke of adversity, adversity that he knew would come to each of us, but that he may not then have known would come to him as early as it did. He said adversity in one form or another is the universal experience of man. It is the common lot of all to experience misfortune, suffering, sickness, or other adversities. Sometimes our work is arduous and unnecessarily demanding. Our faith is tried in various ways, sometimes unjustly tried, it seems. At times it seems that even God is punishing us and ours. For all, on one of the, th on one of the things that makes all of this so uh, hard to bear, is that we ourselves appear to be chosen for this affliction, while others presumably escape. But we can cannot indulge ourselves in the luxury of self-pity. Elder Tuttle then said, and let us and left us these lines from Robert Browning Hamilton, entitled Along the Road, to teach a lesson on pleasure and a lesson on sorrow. I walked a mile with pleasure, she chattered all the way, and left me none the wiser for all she had to say. I walked a mile with sorrow, and ne'er a word said she, but all the things I learned from her when sorrow walked with me. And now this mortal portion of Elder Tuttle's journey is over. He closed the door and opened another. Now he walks and talks with the angels. And so someday will we close and open those same doors.